Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place, George Whittam, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, finally, to bring you all the latest technology, the superstars of voiceover today, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittam and Dan Leonard. Two men, twin son. What happened? I don't know. I must have double clicked. You double clicked. <laughs> Is that the same as double clutching? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Okay. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. <laughs> and I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. All right. Well, Yay. another week has gone by. Uh huh. And uh, nice weather this week. Yes, we love it here in Southern California, we don't do. we? It's yes. a little chilly at night. I actually <laughs> saw frost on some <laughs> some roofs this week, but it quickly dissipated. Don't kill us, please. Okay, right. right. Well, we have a great show tonight, as we do every Monday night at 6 o'clock here in the Pacific Time Zone, uh, 9.30 if you're in Newfoundland. Uh, God only knows what time it is in the Seychelles Islands where probably somebody's watching. Google it. But anyway, tonight we have a great guest, if he can make it. Mm -hmm. uh, he, had a, he had a shoot tonight. Yep. This afternoon, and you know, once you, it's past you know five o'clock, getting places is very difficult. I'm sure he's California. on set right now, tapping his watch, going, "I got to get yeah, over that, to the right. VOBS studio." That's right. Let's that's go. far more important than this this multi million dollar TV show. <laughs> Fred Melamed, <laughs> star of In a World and a pile of other stuff, a lot of stage and uh, screen credits all over the place, yeah. but he's also an A list voiceover guy he's doing fantastic he run. really is really good to see that right and he's living out here in california now and we've had him on the show before but now he can come here yeah if he can get here if he can get here we'll right. see he might just come in we'll, whenever he walks in we will bring him on right and we'll answer your questions so if you have some technical questions some voiceover tech questions throw them into the chat room and anthony gettig our fantastic uh, chat room monitor will get them to george and i and we will answer them to the best of our ability and if we can't Ask again next answered. week. Yeah. That's right. And, <laughs> no, and no. there probably is not, no, no, no. there probably isn't an answer yeah, yeah. to it. Uh, we also have, we also have a studio audience tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Get a shout of our Should studio shot audience. Of those guys, look at those jokers yeah, over there. They're actually our backup if Fred can't make it. <laughs> hey, so, Jake Preston uh, and Danny Hankler. All Danny right. Hankler. Yeah. And, and, and Ari is in there Aww. as well. Um, anyway, um, so why don't we get the show on the road here? Here we go. And now, the voiceover extra, VOBS News, the latest and most comprehensive voiceover industry news, brought to you live. All righty. So, first off, it's the second night of Hanukkah. Hanukkah Sameach, to all those wondering about, about that back there, you can see the, the three candles, the Shamus right here, and then the two other candles right there. Uh... Hanukkah 2015. Everybody's saying it's early this year, but it's right when it always is. <laughs> it's when it's supposed to be. It's on the 25th it's of when it means to. Every year. Like but a anyway. Wizard. Yes. Well, let's start with the good news. Okay. Uh, it's quite likely that you will have a good, if not a great voiceover month. And that will lead you into a great 2016. But the bad news, you might blow it. If you repeatedly allow thoughts of doubt or fear to inhabit your mind, your mouth and your entire career and your month might get stuck there as well. Take this example. With every online audition, you worry that you're not as talented as the other voice actors who are voicing that audition too. If you tell yourself over and over, you'll come to believe it. You know, I got hired for a national spot this week. 
And I'm like, the day before I'm washed up, no one's ever going to hire me again. I haven't done a job since yesterday. Sure enough, comes my way. So you got to think positive. Yeah, absolutely. All right. On the other hand, positive and confident thoughts can give you a lift. We'll call them positive affirmations. Okay. All right. But here's more bad news. If they're not created in the right way, your positive affirmations might just be wishful thinking. In a new voiceover extra article, Dana Dietrich Clark, who's a veteran voice actor, editor, and producer, tells us how to do it right. One, of course, keep your thoughts positive. Focus on what you do want and not what you don't want. Two, believe those thoughts. You got to believe. Affirmations that are too lofty and beyond your capability will not be obtained, and that will lead you to anxiety and frustration. Finally, number three, make your affirmations correspond with your goals and inspire you to action. For instance, say, I'm easily capable of confidently marketing to 10 video producers in my region over the next two weeks, and then do it. All right. So makes sense. It makes tremendous sense. And I know people think some of this stuff is, you know, kind of woo woo woo, you know, spiritual, whatever you want to call it. But man, I think it's been proven now that this stuff really actually does work. Well, you, if you think positive, you know, I mean, it that raises your ha- spirits. You're well, healthier. You're, you're healthier, work, when you, you, and you work harder. Yeah, and you work harder. Right. It's not like, oh, this really sucks. It's like, oh, I'm going to do the greatest thing in the world. You know, <laughs> yeah. and, and it will come true. Yeah. You know, it's better than wishing upon a star. It's making it happen yourself. Mm-hmm. Sorry for the Disney reference. <laughs> yeah. And now, because it's important, it's time for a public service announcement. Pay attention. Nobody ever asks a kid with autism, what is it you'd really like to do? At this school, we ask the kids, what is your goal? What is your dream? Exceptional Minds is a vocational training program for young adults on the autism spectrum who want to have careers in computer animation and visual effects. I think young people with autism are totally underestimated. When you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. They all have different talents, different skills, and what surprised me is that there really are no limits, that if these guys believe that they can do something, they really can. It's estimated that 90 to 95 percent of young adults with autism are unemployed or underemployed. A lot of young adults still live at home, a lot of them suffer from depression and are very isolated from the rest of the world, and the opportunities for them are very limited. We want to develop careers for our young adults. Our full-time program runs three years, at the end of which we have job placement and job coaching. We have a work readiness program. We also have our own in-house studio so that when our students graduate, they can do on-the-job training and work on real projects. We outsourced about 30, 40 shots to the team here. They did fantastic work that we can put into a movie and be proud of it. It's great. I mean, we want to do it again. The studio is their first step into the professional world, the first step in their new careers as digital artists. The whole purpose is to get the students out into the real world. We all have the same dreams. We want significance, dignity, and purpose with our lives. We have an opportunity to give those three words to every single student at this school who will actually be able to go out and participate in the dream. This is my first full-time, full-paying job. I primarily work in After Effects. I learned After Effects at Exceptional Minds. It seemed like a good place for me to fit in because I was interested in animation. Right from the first day that Nikki set foot in our company, he was producing work for us. We saw what level of professionalism is being instilled in them from the very beginning. This was the first opportunity where Nikki could combine 
something he loved to do with something he was really, really good at that could eventually lead to employment. When we first met Kevin, he was working at a supermarket bagging groceries, and they said he would never amount to anything else. I work at Stargate Studios, and uh, I'm a junior compositor. I mainly do like rotoscoping right now, and I'm still learning. I think that you find great talent in the most amazing places. The students at Exceptional Minds have had a fair amount of training to get them ready for the visual effects environment. If it wasn't for Exceptional Minds, I might still be at the supermarket, and I might be living at my parents' house. Everything's changed. Nikki has purpose. It feels like I'm a member of society now. He's capable of making it on his own. Once you get inside and you see what's really happening there, you immediately want to be a part of it. It's the dream factory, you know, the, the movie business. And, and if you can connect people with their dreams, then the magic happens. At Exceptional Minds, we like to say that we are changing lives one frame at a time. All righty. That's the real reason I came to California. Love it. Yeah. So my son Jacob and the maker of Mugman could be part of that program. And he and is. And he was one of how many of the kids that got selected for this? Ten. Ten, man. So, that is amazing. It took some chutzpah to move out here for, for such a small yes, chance, but you did it. Yeah. You, Positive yeah. thinking. Uh, real positive that's thinking. That's some serious so, positive yeah. thinking. So uh, that's a, it's a great organization to support. And uh, otherwise, <clears throat> you know, a lot of these guys just you know, would have a hard time finding employment. But now they're going to be living their dream, working in the capital of where they, where they want to do this. Hopefully this, is a, this program will be, a, if it isn't already, it's a model for a lot of other programs. I've, they should right? be doing this in other places and certainly you know, yeah. in, in other industries. Anything stuff. in the tech industry? Oh, any, yeah. any of that stuff. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's awesome. Anyway, Fred Melamed's going to be our guest. If he can get down here on the 101, who knows what's going on there. But uh, we have backup just in case. But I'm betting he's going to walk in here right at 630. Right on the nose. He's, you know, right on cue. <laughs> on the cue, yeah. Anyway, if you, again, if you got a tech question for us, uh, send it to us uh, in the chat room or at uh, the guys at vobs.tv. And uh, we'll be right back. VO Studio Tech. Recording made simple. Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. This is Jim Tasker from Los Angeles, California. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in Yorba Linda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Randy Thomas chiming in. Hi, this is Joe Szymanski. Hey, this is Rick Robles. Hi, my name is John Patrick Armstrong. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you name it, Georgia set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free, safe, fearless, like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that, long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish him. Thanks, George. You make it easy. Every Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Voiceover Body Shop. I love when they talk BS about you. That's one of my favorites. I, I know. Got to get a few more of those. Yeah. Now that we're worked in, this is episode 16 already. Yeah, the kinks are coming out of it I a little know. bit. L it's usually a user. It's basically user error at this point. Yeah. If right. you see something wrong, it's because... I have like twitchy fingers. Okay. Or something. I have to reach over here and get that <laughs> stuff for you. Yeah. Your turn. Oh yeah. What am I doing? A commercial? Oh yeah. Live read. <laughs> A live read. My favorite. I've trained all my life for this moment. This shot's not quite right. Okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, Source Elements is one of our wonderful sponsors. Uh, they are 
bringing to you technology that allow you to connect to other studios. How's the mic placement? Uh, connect to other studios in real time. So if you're having a Trump problem, I can go like this for those who are having trouble. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You our top it. story tonight. Our, our ASL guy right yeah, behind me. Uh, <laughs> Source Elements brings uh, products that are really innovative and very, very well known now among the voiceover world for being able to connect to other studios real time sort of a la ISDN, but they're an awesome replacement for ISDN in a world where ISDN is getting way too expensive, very difficult to even get or impossible to get in some areas that previously could get it. So if you're running a studio that uses ISDN and you don't have Source Connect, you really need to catch up with the times because ISDN could go away anytime in the next couple of years. We don't know when, but when it does happen, you're going to need an another solution that gives you that same kind of sound quality, you know, interoperability and connectivity that people are going to count on. I'm going to just pull up the guillotine here to, to cut <laughs> the it The ISDN off. guillotine? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, so you need a technology and Source Elements is on the forefront of this stuff. They really are. So you can check out their line of products over at SourceElements.com and uh, sign up for a 15-day trial of Source Connect or just sign up and get a Source Connect Now uh, license, which is totally free you can immediately start using it. It allows you to connect to other studios using Google Chrome as the uh, connect is the, as the software. You don't download anything. It's just a web page. And the sound quality is stellar. The latency is very, very, very low. And it's an excellent substitute for Skype. If you want to do a, a you know, a work with a client and they want to listen to you in real time. They don't have to record you. Anymore, they don't have right? to even but record they'll, you. They they'll can sound great. Yeah. They'll hear you the way you want to be heard. If, if you've got a good studio, use something like source connect. Don't use Skype. They, you want them to hear them in full quality. Anyway, that's it. Source elements. We really appreciate your support of voiceover body shop. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they're, and now, you know, it's the now most you important know. thing. That's mm -hmm. right. Okay. What's going on? Well, let's go on in the chat room. It's time for. The chat room check-in. Chat room check-in. Check that almost worked. Uh, yeah, but I think what more the, didn't to, really. Yeah, we uh, didn't do that one in rehearsal very well. Okay. Uh, let's see. First question from Philip Ormond. Uh-huh. He says, I bet our guest is here. I yeah, hear dog the dog barking. alarm's going off. Yes. Um, subject, Twisted Wave and Isotope RX-5. Yep. All right. Message. Hey guys, love what you're doing with your show. Uh, let, let, me, let me do this like, uh, what's his name on Fox? Uh -huh. you, know, like, you know, love what you're doing with the show <laughs> and the voice actor community. Uh, this question is for George. Twisted Ray Wave and RX5. I don't understand how to do the connect thing with Twisted Wave and RX5. I send from Twisted Wave all right, but not sure how to return treated files back to Twisted Wave from rx5 feel free to say i'm a total dummy thanks <laughs> philip you're, not as hard as you think you're not a total you're, you're not a total dummy i i mean i I'll, I'll be honest i have not used that function yet with twisted wave hey fred welcome all my right friend. he made it all hey. right have a seat relax uh i have not yet making made use of that uh, technology the handoff thing where you can go from twist to wave in and out right. i haven't so i i can't answer that question i i haven't used it well does does isotope just create another wave file or what well um you know I, i've only used isotope as a plugin in twisted wave right. so far mm -hmm. so i haven't really needed that handoff function um but you know what a good resource for that question would probably be the twisted wave user group, group on, on Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah. yeah, because that's a really concentrated room full of people that know Twisted Wave pretty well and have probably have tried some of these things that even Dan and I haven't tried yet. I, I don't true. have Isotope 5. I, I haven't I, used it. I, I used still Adobe RX, Audition. I, I still have RX2. Oh, I haven't yeah. upgraded to 5. I haven't needed to. Yeah, but. No, but Audition does the same stuff that Isotope does, and it's just yeah. one program. It's not a big deal. For the deal. most part, yeah. Isotope's yeah. adding some more bells and whistles, cool. of course. But, you know, I'll have to try it one of these. Yeah, I, I, I don't have a strong answer for you. I know we were, we were saying that we can answer almost anything. Well, I don't have an answer for you on that one, but hopefully we can help you find the answer. And if you're not on Facebook, let us know. We'll go find the answer, and, and we'll help find it for you absolutely <laughs> next question mark kamish mm -hmm. subject audio interface upgrade okay okay i've been watching and loving your show for now let me do it again been loving your show for two years 
All right. In that time, I've been operating just fine with uh, my Rode NT1A mic and Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 interface. Excellent. All right. Now, I know, I know, no problem. Don't fix it. All right. In other words, no problem, don't fix, fix it. it. Right, it's right. not broke, don't fix it. Yeah, All that's right. what we always talk about. However, my question is this. Assuming cash flow allows for the expense, when is it time to invest in an audio interface upgrade that allows for limited front-end processing? Mm. <sighs> All right. Well, I've went, went, got to finish the question. Okay, I'm just okay. giving him a dirty I, look I, to I, start yeah, with. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Um, all right. Most of my work is still undirected, but I've gotten to a point where I'm asked to do some directed sessions via Skype or Source Connect now. Okay. The Yamaha AGO3 USB mixing console and the Universal Audio Apollo Twin come to mind. Thanks to well, Whitham's World. Well, yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> well. So what he wants to know, what should he do? Is that what he wants to know? Which way to go? When to do it? When to do it? When to do it. You know, and if to do <clears throat> it. You know. Yeah. Well. You go ahead. The barrier to entry with the, the Yamaha board at $150 isn't so bad. No. That's so a USB board? It's a USB yeah. board that yeah. kind of combines, you know, the f- simplicity of the Scarlet right. and the sound quality mm-hmm. with an extra layer of processing that you can turn on. Right. If and you're doing a live session and you and <clears> they want processing in the front end. They, you really only need that if you're doing sessions that are being recorded remotely. Right. So if you're doing Source Connect, right. for example or ISDN and the other studio wants to hear you kind of with your sound on it, whatever that sound that you do that is beyond your own voice. That, 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 that magical brew yeah, yeah. that some promo guys use. Very so. few people need this, really. Really. Really few people need to be able to do that on the front end. So, But the AGO3 is a good entry point into it. The next step up is the Apollo in terms of boxes that do these jobs. And the Apollo is... Somebody fell out there. The Apollo is a lot more expensive and a lot more complex to set up and use. So right. that's kind of a, an advanced tool. But, uh, you know, if your budget allows for it, I'd go right to the Apollo. But the Yamaha does the job for most people that would need that. Right. And if and again, I think my thoughts on front-end processing are pretty well known, at yeah. least by our audience. Basically, don't do it. Don't do it. it yeah. If One, if you don't know what you're, do- you're doing, you don't need to be doing it. Right. Pretty yeah. simple. Yeah. Um, you know, unless you are asked specifically by somebody to do it, then you do it. Yeah. But the thing is, if somebody is asking you specifically to do it, they probably don't know what they're doing either. <laughs> it's probably a good chance that that's the case. You know, so, yeah. you know, it's it in that type of case, best to consult an audio professional like one of us, this guy, myself, yeah. and find out what it is that they're asking. And if they give you some certain parameters, we can help you set that up. Agreed. And uh, that will make your life a lot easier. But front-end processing, certainly not something you need when you're just recording dry at home and you're doing yeah. the recording. Yeah, when you're recording on your own, you have the luxury of being able to go back and, and apply just the right processing. Something like Twisted Wave stacks, which are really, really cool. You can have different stacks for different styles so that you don't have to worry about loading a certain setting on that interface and forgetting that this was turned on. And, right. you know, when you record through front end processing, the, the processing is on the recording. It's there, right? It's printed or it's on the tape. You right. can't undo it if yeah. it's wrong. Right. Or if you have Mark Cashman's cleaning lady who comes along <laughs> right. and turns knobs oh, and, man. and then calls us in the middle of the night, my cleaning lady did this. Yes. Or the cat sat on my mixer right, or exactly. the dog ate my homework or... Yeah. All those things. Yeah. So I would avoid it. Yeah. Front end processing. Eh. Yeah. Not really necessary. Yeah. Let, let the engineers do that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All righty. Do we have any other questions? You know what? I just got an answer on the previous question oh, from John Keeney, who I've worked with before. He says, you have to start it again in the effects rack. So I'm not sure if that answers the question that he had, but that's what John just chimed in on. So. If that has significance to you. Right to John. Yeah. Maybe John. Maybe you, t- you guys need to talk, John Keeney. You need. You guys need to talk. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. What, what is going on out there? The black helicopters know. are circling. Are they looking for you, uh, yeah, Fred? Fred. No. Did, you, did you leave the set early and they're trying to track you down? <laughs> anyway, our guest tonight, Fred Melamed, star of screen and voiceover and all sorts of other stuff. And uh, we'll be talking with him in just a a couple of minutes, so do not go away. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop.
Learning never ends. You continue to grow. Edge Studio has grown. Pursue multiple disciplines in tandem and grow your career. We've added new courses in a new curriculum. We picked the best coaches from the community of working voice actors. A new technology division, engineering and consulting led by George Whittem. Follow your dream. Sign up for advanced learning or register for an introduction to voice acting or foundation studies program. See it all now at the new edgestudio.com. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Fighting broke out overnight for Sunday's Indian. What do you want to watch tonight? I don't know. I mean, the same stuff's always on all the time. No, I am so sick of American Pickers. Um, <gasps> what about VOBS? Yes! Oh my gosh, oh, you just read my God. mind! I can't That's it. perfect! I want to watch it because you know why? They've got the best BS about VO. VOBS, Mondays, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, on VOBS.us. All righty, we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop, and we need to tell you about VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. VO2GoGo.com's voiceover curriculum is a five-time winner of Backstage Magazine's Reader's Choice Award for Best Voiceover Classes, and best voiceover teacher, David H. Lawrence the 17th, who we'll have to have on again pretty soon. It's 36 classes online or in person across a year-long course, featuring not just classes in the art of voiceover, no, but also in the commerce and science of running your voiceover business. And each month's class day includes a workout class for all participants. Now, during December... VO2GoGo.com students will perform a seven-step annual tune-up of their voiceover practices and learn the best ways to find a voiceover agent. And in January, we begin all over again with the basics. So now's the time to sign up. Get more details and sign up for the pro membership to save money at VO2GoGo.com forward slash V-O-B-S. That's VO2GoGo.com forward slash V-O-B-S. VO2GoGo.com. Everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. Do you do this for a living? I do. That's a pretty good spot, man. Thank you. Say. Thank nice you very time. much. It's a <laughs> pleasure to be here. Well, it is time to introduce our guest who made it in from, from the wild. Have a seat. Thank you. Get in here. All right. A good friend of ours, a guy who's... Uh, now, just listen to some of this guy's credits. All right. Uh, he has, as far as his voiceover credits are concerned, he, you've heard his voice on the Olympics, Mercedes-Benz. Sorry about that that uh, John Hamm thing. Uh, CBS Sports, USA Network, the Super Bowl, numerous commercials and television programs. He became known within the industry as a voice actor, appearing in Grand Theft Auto and dubbing several actors' entire performances in films. But it was for his portrayal of sensitive villain Cy Abelman. Yes, in Joel and Ethan Cohn's 2009 film, A Serious Man, uh, which was nominated for Best Picture at the 2010 Academy Awards that he became most widely known. And uh, we'll talk about some of the TV stuff you're doing right now, because you're a busy guy. I am. With that, that, that 
florid introduction. I should be much better than I am. That sounds so impressive. I, I know. No, you have to have a positive <laughs> attitude. You did. You missed the beginning of the show. Everything. You got to be very positive. I'm Fred Melamed, welcome Pleasure to Voice to Over you, Body Dan Shop, and George and everybody else. Delighted to be with you. Oh, it's it's great to have you on here. Thank um, you. So. You're, you're out here in California. Yes. Both of us out here by almost the same circumstances. Yes, that's right. And uh, so, but now that you're out here, you're really, really working a lot of stuff. I mean, I remember when we talked in Voice 2014, you went through this long list of things that you were doing. I take it that list continues. It does. I've been, I mean, it's funny. I approached coming out here with such... Anxiety. I was, you know, I'm the type of person who like uh, has the same agent for 30 years and stays in bad relationships, never changes uh, sneaker styles. You know, I don't do anything. I don't make any changes uh, easily. And I'd been living in New York. I was born in New York and lived there almost all my life. And I was living for the previous 10 years before we moved here on the east end of Long Island with my wife and kids and primarily doing uh, movies, doing features not so much television and voiceovers, but I had a studio in my house, which was fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I would go off for, uh, you know, a month or six weeks to wherever. The, in those days, there was a lot of um, government support by various state governments to, for them to do locations. Shoot in Tennessee. Right, yeah. Tennessee, <laughs> Texas, North right. Carolina. So I would go off uh, and leave my wife with the kids for rather uh, extended periods of time, mm -hmm. uh, which was, and then come back to Montauk where it was, you know, beautiful and, and uh, you know, rather quiet, and I liked it, but it was tough on my wife to do that year after year. Anyway, we decided, I, I got the, uh, a pilot for a Fox show, so I said to my wife, why don't you come with me when I do it, and we'll look around, and we'll see how we like it. Uh, and we found a place we liked, and we found, I have a son with uh, autism, so that was a big consideration also. We found a good school for him, and we moved, but I must say, I didn't do it with extreme enthusiasm, but it, <laughs> it turned out uh, really, really good. It turned out to be great, and uh uh, I'm really delighted that we moved here, and everybody, my family is liking it, I like it, and in terms of work, it happened to have happened at a, a really sort of propitious time for me. I had a movie come out uh, right about the time I moved here, a film called In a World, oh, all yes. about the voice of a world. Mm -hmm. So I arrived with a kind of an entree because of that, which was nice, uh, and it's been, uh, it's been just terrific, really wonderful. Yeah, and you work every day? Well, yeah, I mean, on one thing or another, the way I have, a sh I have my own show now, uh, uh, which hasn't yet premiered. It's going to be on Netflix starting in April um, called Lady Dynamite uh, with uh, a, a wonderful um, female comedian. Um, it's two of us. Anyway, uh, that's, you know, to have your own show like that is fantastic and uh, a lot of work on it, uh, on many other shows. So even if I'm not working, I was working today on a, on a show, which is why I was late getting here, which for which I apologize. You had to reshoot a scene or something? Yeah. It was something we started last week, and then something didn't come out right, so it uh, had to be redone. And mm -hmm. they promised they would let me go by five, but since we're living in L.A., and this was in the southern part of L.A., it was a, a, rather a trial getting here. But anyway. We're glad you made it. I appreciate <laughs> it. But so it's been, it's been really terrific. And my voiceover work uh, has not changed too much, except that... Um, I've had the good fortune to be able to be a little bit more uh, choosy about what I do. That is um, because I have something somewhat more recognition value as an actor. Uh, you know, I can, I can ask more for certain things and not elect to do certain things. Uh, but that's strictly because I became sort of more uh, illustrious as an actor in this, in this late, you know, phase of my life. Right. So when you, when you started, you know, you, you started in theater, I take it in New York. I did. I was, well, I was trained, I went to Yale Drama School, uh, where we were trained uh, only in theater. Uh, the presumption, the probably incorrect presumption, was that if you could handle yourself in the theater, uh, movies and television and other things ought to come easily to you. I'm not sure. I'm not sure uh, if that was correct, but that was the kind of snooty point of view at that point. Uh, and then I got out. I went there from '78 to '81. I got out in '81, and then uh, I started to work at a theater out in Minneapolis called the Guthrie Guthrie Theater, and then I got a part on Broadway in a play called Amadeus, the original American production of Amadeus, uh -huh. uh, which was a big deal. It, was, uh, it won many Tonys and stuff. Uh, but midway through the, through the run of that, I was in that for 16 months, I began to have very severe stage fright, terrible, crippling stage fright, really bad. And I finished the run out, but I thought, Jesus, I made this horrible mistake. Here <laughs> I am. I became an actor, and people said, oh, don't be an actor. It's too hard. And I said, I'll show you. And I became an actor, and I thought, 
what the hell? I can't handle this. I can't handle an eight show week. It's too hard. And at the same time, I, it so happened that my agent, Harry Abrams, had a rather uh, impressive list of voiceover clients. He had some very big voiceover guys. So I said, uh, listen, I'd like you to submit me for voiceovers. And he was not particularly encouraging at first. He said, listen, <laughs> they don't want sonorous voices. They want voices that sort of cut through. I said, well, just give me a shot. So he did. And I was lucky, you know, pretty soon out of the box. I got a couple of big, big accounts. I got Conoco Oil, which at the time was a big oil company. And then I got Mercedes and MCI, which then was a big, then was a yeah, big telephone yeah, company. Yeah, right. And then it became, right, now, they're now, gone. Now, right. Now, <laughs> now they make the golf tees or something. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, at the time it was a big deal. So I, I started doing a lot of voiceover work. Uh, and I didn't really have the burning desire to act much. And I was making you know, by my standards then, a very good living. And I wasn't married. I didn't have any responsibility. I was a youngish, single guy. So that's all I did for many, many years. Um, and then I had a couple of casting directors who liked me, and they would call me up, and they would say, oh, Woody wants you to play a psychiatrist. It's four days. Are you interested? And I wouldn't audition. I would say, okay, you know, that sounds good. I would do it. But uh, so I got kind of spoiled, like not wanting to audition. Right. <laughs> uh and, and it was, acting was more sort of like a hobby. And I was doing, you know, I consider that uh, eating in restaurants and doing voiceovers was more like my life's work. <laughs> hmm. uh, but it, it, the voiceover world, I mean, I'm telling my story, but the, it's interesting. The voiceover world has changed so vastly since I've been in it. And, I, and because of where I lived and because of my place in it, I was slow to catch on to the changes within it, honestly. I mean, I can remember when In a World came out. In a World, for those who haven't seen it, is a movie all about the voiceover Voice world. Business, yeah. uh, and it came out uh, now almost three years ago. And we were all thrilled, all of us that did the movie, with its reception. People really liked it and all that. Uh, but we were all surprised at how interested people seemed to be in the voiceover aspect of the film. It's kind of a family story with voiceover. It's kind of right. its backdrop. Yeah, it's, it's a romantic film too yeah you know, it has a romantic so i mean right. i yeah. took my wife to it and she really enjoyed it as a film so yeah, you it's don't a particularly have to know about voiceovers but we were yeah. all kind of shocked that there was so much interest in just the voiceover aspect of it and it was because that was right about the time when this explosion was happening of this kind of confluence of factors one factor was the technology became uh, available to everybody so that people all over the country could do it. You could do. You didn't have to live in New York or L.A. or right, Chicago, right. obviously. It, it was it was about seven, eight years before that. Well, it, it had started, it, but, but it suddenly... You noticed it then, yeah. Well, I noticed it, but also I'd say a good 50% of the business by that point, or maybe more, uh, got went that route, went that route. And it allowed a lot of non-union people who had... And prior to that, it had been non-union stuff in a very small chunk of the business but it became this much huger chunk. And then also they started wanting, uh, as you know, the business is largely uh, subject to trends of different kinds. Uh, and they started wanting uh, ordinary sounding, when I say ordinary, people that sound like regular people. Conversational voices. Yeah. Right, not yeah. people who sound like James Earl Jones or you know, dramatic sounding voices right. like mine. So there was this kind of changeover. All these factors happened at once. People be able to... Been, we're able to do this from all over the country because the technology allowed it. It became in it relatively inexpensive. I mean, I, for example, I was the first person I knew who ever had a home studio in New York. I think uh, Joe Cipriano and some others had one here before, but I built my home studio in 92 in New York, and I was the first guy I knew that had a full home studio. To give you an idea how far long ago that was, ISDN was not yet really... There was another a, a previous technology called Switch Fifty Six, which was kind of like an <laughs> SDN. But that's yeah. what we had. It was yeah. different. Uh, and um, I bought a one gigabyte hard drive, <laughs> which was considered insanely well, large. Ninety two, yeah, and cost three thousand dollars. Wow, for a one gigabyte hard drive, which now you could buy at Staples for probably eleven dollars, and probably works better. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, the world was 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 quite different, but uh, home studios I thought were a great great idea. Um, it changed the business radically in that the social aspect of the business and the smallness of the business went away entirely. When I first started doing it, I first started really in '81. Uh, there were about maybe a hundred guys 
uh, certainly a hundred, no more than a hundred on the East coast that did 80% of the work. Yeah. yeah. Now there's a hundred guys were just on my street yes. doing it here. So, <laughs> so I was, I, so I've been, uh, you know, around for, for many different manifestations of the, of the sort of, of the, of the voiceover world. Uh, and it's been interesting to see how that's all happened. And, uh, Fortunately for me, there are a few guys like me that still hang on because there's a certain degree of, you know, they want certain kinds of voices in certain situations that have distinction and things like that uh, mm -hmm. of a certain kind. Um, but it's true that there's a huge pool of work that's opened up to a whole new crew of people. And that happened uh, noticeably, at least to me. And as you say, I might have been behind the curve. <laughs> Uh, right about the time the movie came out, and it, you know, uh, and I've seen how, how how vastly people have gotten involved in it. Yeah, it's it's a huge community all over the world. Yeah, you know, and and we have some examples in our audience of some great social networks here in the voiceover business, and our audience is primarily they're all voice actors. Absolutely. So they know what you're talking about. Yeah, they understand. You know, because they're in Des Moines, in St. Louis, and and in Australia. We know someone's watching from Australia live. You that's great. Yeah. So, and we're also, th there were like sort of two kind of funneling tracks that led to people doing voiceovers. Either people started out as DJs, they were radio guys, right, or they were actors, and and those were almost the only people that you would meet would c came from those backgrounds, and that limited, of course, the kinds of interpretations there were. Now you meet people who come from all over. Yeah. You know, all a lot of recovering podiatrists <laughs> yes. in the voiceover business today. <laughs> And accountants and, uh, and you know, people who used to work for the government or IT people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it, it is, I mean, first of all, uh, it's wonderful that you can have your own business, mm -hmm. which is not uh, a particularly cash intensive business to start. You can make your, to some degree, make your own hours and all that stuff. And you're doing a creative job. Uh, as I think, I, I, I'm not saying anything very uh, earth shattering or new when I say that it's hard for people to get started in it because it's a business that depends on track record and reputation and all right. that kind of stuff. Um, it's funny. I, you know, I, people often ask me, uh, you know, how do you get successful in show business? And I have the advice that nobody wants to hear. I always say that, <laughs> which is, I say the same thing. Uh, the, the, the secret is, uh, to be so good that they cannot ignore you. Uh, people, I mean, that's Works a, for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if uh, people don't want to hear that, they would like to hear, well, you know, you take a seminar and at the seminar they have an agent and then you, you impress the agent and the agent takes you on as a client. And then you get 400 f Twitters on, f you know, follower followers on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And then you get maybe 56 people that like you on Facebook and then you have it made. Well, all that stuff is mm -hmm. good. There's nothing wrong with it at all. But, um, the Basis of it is to be really, really good at it. So how do you do that? That's the big question. Well, that was going to be my next question. What What is your philosophy of voiceover? Because you've been, as you said, you've been doing this since 1981. And you achieved a great deal of success at it. What was it that you were doing? What was it that you brought to the microphone uh, that you think was able to propel you above everybody else? And, and, and how does that still apply today? Well, I, I mean, I think for everybody, it's that you bring you, whatever that, what that, you know, whatever that you is that, that your performer set of things, that is you. Um, I think the way to start, a wise way to start is by listening. I think people don't listen as much as they might. Just like if you wanted to get really good at music. Mm -hmm. I think it's like getting good at any, any art. Um, you start out by, by developing your own taste. So what is it that you admire? When you listen to television, when you hear cartoons, or when you hear advertisements, or when you hear promos, or when you hear anything, what kinds of voices do you think, not do you necessarily think you could do, but what are the ones that really you find cool, or compelling, or interesting, or you want to hear more from them, or that something about their personality comes through? And I mean, after all, most television, most radio, we tune it out. You know, that's, it, there's so much information, especially now, with right. everybody walking around connected practically 24 hours a day, uh, it's human nature to want to just go, yeah, yeah, okay, I want to get to the good part already. Right. So how do you break through that? Well, certain people are able to break through that, but they break through it by providing some aspect of themselves, putting some aspect of themselves forward that is arresting. Now, how do you decide what that is? 
That's a hard question. But the way I would start is I would start out, just like I would start out playing the guitar or playing the piano or painting, I would start out seeing what I liked and then trying to imitate it, trying to imitate it. But the purpose of doing that is not to come up with a with a uh, absolutely great imitation. It's to evolve your own style. But right. the way to begin that is by by having rudiments that have to do with copying a sound that you like. Hmm. Were there any any particular models that you used back then when you first started out? Yes, absolutely. Like uh, I thought Percy Rodriguez was the greatest guy oh, I'd yes. ever heard. Do you know Percy Rodriguez? A deep voice, uh, African American gentleman. Right, uh, actually Canadian. He was Canadian, yeah. African Canadian. Right, but uh, a fantastic sound. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was a man called Hal Riney, yeah. very famous in advertising. He owned an agency, and he hired Percy Rodriguez to do some political ads for him. And he wound up cribbing Percy Rodriguez's style and becoming a voiceover guy himself <laughs> and became kind of more famous than Percy ever was by right. kind of copying Percy Rodriguez. Percy Rodriguez, I thought, was like, was probably my favorite of all time. Um, you know, my tastes are probably geared to my age. The guys that I love are guys from when I was young and coming into it. Percy Rodriguez, I thought, was great. I loved, there's a guy called David Ford. Years, this is a long, long time ago. Um, I, I, who else? Uh, Norman Rose. Great, mm -hmm. great guy. Um, if you want guys that are uh, kind of more contemporary, guys that I really like, um, Harry Chase, I think, is a great voice, if you know Harry Chase. Mm -hmm. um, I like voices that are a little sophisticated, uh, but not so much so that you feel intimidated by them, that have a little bit of kind of elan, a little bit of style to them. Harry Chase, I think, is really, really good. Uh, I like, um, let me see, who else? Uh, God, what's his name? The guy who does BMW. I can't think. Oh, he did it for years and years. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Anyone remember who that was? I'll think of it. Yeah. I'll think Going of his name. He was also an actor, but yeah. he became famous for doing BMW. And he also did, uh, sometimes he did some of the Olympic films, uh, voiceovers for the Olympic films. I thought he was great. Um, I like voices, uh, that are kind of dramatic, but not to a degree that ruins the intimacy. Right. If you know what I mean. No, exactly. That's yeah. kind of my taste. Yeah. Um, That's, I, it, it's interesting because, I mean, our, our frames of reference are probably from the same era. And we have, I think the majority of our audience we know is not skewing very young. So they probably know who you're talking about. Uh, but for you young guys, um, you know, what you're saying is that who do you find today? That you find appealing, and, yeah. and 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 listen to those styles, and and try and and try and emulate that somewhat. But then again, what is it that you bring that is unique? Exactly, and obviously, if it, you know, there are some differences that have to do with uh, the conventions of what you're doing. If you're doing movie trailers, um, you know, although the business of movie trailers has shrunk somewhat, there's still plenty of space in it. You know, people that are doing kind of what Ashton Smith kind of thing that he does, or um, you don't hear, you don't, you hear, I see, I hear a few people in the Don LaFontaine bag, not too many, uh, not as many as you did, <coughs> but, but some people in that bag still. Um, and then you hear people that are, that are lighter, you know, in style also doing it, but, but still may tend to kind of, kind of a dramatic posture. Who do you like? Who are your? Oh, well, I like you. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 every time I hear, I'm like, that's a Fred Melman spot. I know that, you know, uh, John Hamm just great with, you know, with Mercedes these days. Um, you know, all of the actors, all the, if you look at all the different car spots, there are certain people like, um, Lexus is, uh, Maurice LaMarche, mm -hmm. fabulous voice actor. Uh, and he just, he just brings such style. To that that particular uh, genre. He has a great range too. I mean, he does yeah. cartoon voices and everything. <clears throat> yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I thought, um, I think they got. I don't think they use him anymore. But I thought that. Oh God, I can't think of his name. It's been a long day. Trust me. You get to our age, you forget all these things. So, he, on the on the black <laughs> on the blacklist, that actor. Oh, oh, uh, James Spader. James Spader. <laughs> yeah. Did a car. He, I think it was Acura. It was it, it was, it was uh, uh, no, no, Rotary Engine Mazda. Mazda. Was it Mazda? Mazda. I thought he was great on he those Mazda He was fabulous. Spots. He was. Yes. Terrific. 
Yeah. But actors can be hot and cold. I, I know some, people, some instances where they've hired actors, I won't name any names, okay. but big actors, famous actors, and I'm certain that only the people from the ad agency who got some cachet from hiring those actors right. know it, but the public goes like, hmm, doesn't mean much. Right. On the other hand, there are some actors, Alec Baldwin, for example, who's an mm. excellent, excellent voiceover guy, yes, in addition to being an actor. Right. Uh, but it's different with different people. Yeah. What type of stuff do you like to do when it comes to voiceover? Uh, do I enjoy doing? Yeah. Well, to, to say rather, something rather obvious, I enjoy doing stuff that's well written. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, the, better, the better something is written, uh, kind of the easier it is to do and the more it suggests to you how to handle it. Um, I don't do, uh, I, when I first started out early in my career, I did recorded books and I enjoyed doing that. But as I got further on, I just found that the ratio of work to money was, <laughs> was so, it, it hasn't changed. <laughs> was so, uh, now, nowadays I have my, my sister-in-law is very, is a wonderful recorded book reader and producer, uh, named Bernadette Dunn. She does terrific work. She's won several, quite a few of those um, awards. But uh, you have to really, really not mind putting in very, very long hours right. reading and be accustomed to, to that kind of work. Yeah, I know this, we have a lot of people in our audience who are who are audiobook narrators, and it is hard work. I mean, you it's a totally different skill. Yeah. Because you, I mean, it's acting and it's it, your long hours. And, and the people who are good at it, I mean, I had a friend, unfortunately now not with us anymore, a guy called Patrick Tull, who's an English actor, the best narrator I have ever heard in my life of recorded books. He would do characterizations of the of the characters that were quite full. I mean, yeah. he'd go through the book, work on it, work on these mm. characters, and he took it extremely seriously. Yeah. Uh, and they were often ind indistinguishable from one another. They were so good. Yeah. He did Dickens books and the works of this one particular author that I like called Patrick O'Brien, um, that I, I think are the best recorded books I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Uh, but that's, you're talking about a major, major, major work. So I don't, I haven't done anything for a while that's that exhaustive. Um, what I like doing is stuff that's, that's, I like doing stuff that's funny, but rather um, clever, cleverly funny. Um, advertising has the most opportunity for cleverness right. and it's also the most money for the least amount of work. Yeah, well, there is that. Yeah. There is that. Yeah. I, and, and I have found that the writing at this level is sheer poetry most of the time. It's, yeah, I mean, if you get up at, at, at a high enough level, you, you do see uh, a really noticeable difference. Um, I have two big accounts that I've been doing for, one I've been doing for a while and another one is new. Um, one is uh, Boar's Head, all the Boar's Head, Boar's Head meets and deli yeah. stuff. That stuff is written very, very well. Um, and it's good stuff too, by the way. As a product? As a product. It's, it it's, one, of the, it's one of the few products I can personally attest is, well, that Mercedes-Benz, I can attest are really, really good. <laughs> um, I, have another, I have another car, uh, an American car, Chrysler, uh, which is just about to take off, and that I'm very, very excited about. And this is a brand new campaign, very funny, interesting campaign, which I'm looking forward to rolling out. Uh, and that one also is very, very well written. Uh, very so well written. You, you can't ask for a bit more than it being well written. That makes a big deal. No, that's and, a huge deal. But I've been doing it long enough that I came up against producers yeah. uh, who were not used to working in this milieu and made the mistake of wanting to put every possible feature about every product they right. put in. Yeah. I thought this was a 60. No, it's a, it's <laughs> yeah. trying to shove 120 minutes into, into a 60 second spot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That would often happen. And not, and it wasn't just problematic because there were too many words. There were too many ideas for an audience. Right. You know, I'm, I subscribe to the old kind of uh, David Ogilvy idea that you identify what's really great or what's really different about the product instead of giving a laundry list of everything about the product. Yeah. And the phone number. Yes. That one I never got on the radio. It's like, the phone number? How many times do you want me to say that? <laughs> Except for all the lawyer firms that have isn't gone it, to 888 eight, 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 eight. Don't you have to say the number seven times before people remember Something it? like that. Yeah, something well, like they have to, it's three of them to get a pencil attached. Right? <laughs> right. Especially while you're driving, which makes it even worse. If you have a question for Fred Melibet, throw it into our chat room. And Anthony... Uh, getting sitting there in Kalamazoo, Michigan. By the way, I hope his, his grandmother is feeling better, or his mother actually is feeling better. She had a little bit of a heart attack last week, but I hear she's doing better. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, But Anthony will get that question to us, and we will ask it of Fred Melamed, 
and he will answer that question because that's what we do here on VoiceOver Body Shop. So stay tuned. We will be right back after this message. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Learn the latest in voiceover technology. Business. At good old-fashioned acting. Hey, Paul, I really like your suit. Where did you get it? It looks good on you. This is VOBS. All right. Well, you know, one of our sponsors is the greatest guy in the world, and we actually saw him on a TV commercial this week Yeah, for some cancer drug. And everybody, I've been seeing on Facebook, gee, I, I guess it really worked. Harlan's still alive. <laughs> it's it's doing great. No, it was some, some, some cancer drug, and, and there he is, you know, walking amongst the skyscrapers of Chicago, and I went, that guy looks familiar, and he's in Chicago. That's Harlan. And I wrote, is that you? Yeah, that was me. So... Congratulations to him on a big national TV campaign. That's you see it in all the football games. So he's getting lots of face time, which is really good because yeah. he's got a great face and he's very expressive. He is, and he has a great website where you can get the best voiceover stuff there is. Not only his signature series stuff like the VO1A microphone and the uh, the Porta Booth Plus and the Porta Booth Pro. And the, uh, all the other fine items. Oh, and the, the headphones. headphones. I guess, sorry. I almost forgot the headphones, the Harlan Hogan signature series headphones. Yeah. They're there at his great website, voiceoveressentials.com. As I reach mm -hmm. out and George will hand them to me so I can show you what they look like. They look like headphones. Very but cozy. These are not just any headphones. These are designed for voiceover. No, you don't talk into them or use them like a telephone. <laughs> they are the best headphones for voiceover because they're flat, not in shape, but they are flat in response. These are not what you listen to Linkin Park or Pink Floyd or, or whoever else you like to listen to or Pavarotti. Uh, they are for listening to your voice and your voice only uh, because it gives you back, like studio monitors, exactly what you sound like. You know, we're always talking here on the show about, you know, the idea of a home studio is not to make you sound great. It's to make you sound like you. This will give you back that which you sound like yeah. you as you sound in reality. And they're great headphones for that specific purpose. If you don't have a pair of studio monitors, these are by far, by far the next best thing. Not only that, he designed them, you know, like a Twistiflex watch, you know, they're comfortable. There's memory foam pads in here real leather, all those sorts of yes. things. These are not going to flake. These are not going to flake off on your shirt. No, they people will all the time. They're, like, they're made of metal. My as a other of fact. headphones that are not name brand after these, they, 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 they flake off all the time on your clothes. These will never do that because they're leather. That's right. Anyway. Can you, I put in a plug while we're talking? You're on. All right. I have a plug, a regular a plug. Switch, switch to Fred. I'm trying. Here. My mouse got lost. Oh, okay. Come back here, mouse. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, and Fred. And scene. Okay. There hey, we go. You're on. <laughs> so I have a plug, an, uh, an honest plug. Um, uh, George, I, about a year ago, I moved houses. I changed to a new house. And I put a booth in to my new house, not a booth, a, a recording area, I should say, into my new house. 
And I didn't have like a whisper room or anything like that. And in my previous house, I had absolute quiet. It was great. But this new house, even though it's a lovely house, backs right up against Laurel Canyon Boulevard. Oh, Which okay. means <laughs> that you get automobile noise quite often. At certain times of the day. Yeah, worse certain than times of the day. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I just, I, don't, I didn't want to get a booth because I spend so much time in there. It's just, I didn't want to sit in a little booth. I mean, I just, it's just depressing to me. Yeah. So I got a, a, got a, porta bo- a porta booth plus and it works great. It does. It really works well. Yeah, it's perfect for a 416 or and certainly for doing promo work, which is what Harlan designed it for. And uh, good choice. Are you, are you using your uh, U87? Yeah, I use the, the 87. Booth Plus and it's working pretty well. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, there's there's <laughs> there's something you wouldn't you thought. Go. That's it's awesome. Big microphone to fit in that little that little Porta Booth yeah. Plus, but Well, I have to sort you. of bend it out. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. But it works fine. Oh, it really cool, does. It's great. It's a great unit and uh, and portable. So yes. if you ever go on the road and you have to use it on the road, not that you would take your U87 on the road, but maybe you do. You could. You could. It just, you know, you, I got a little you, Apogee for that, but I rarely have to work on that. Right. Work great, great, works great with the Apogee. Anyway, Fred Melamed uses one. You should too. VoiceOverEssentials.com. Go over there and tell them we sent you. You can actually just go straight over there, but if you're in our, on our webpage, if you're watching the show on our webpage, and right above my head, or is it below me? No, not the bottom. It's you're, at the bottom of right the page. Click and you just say go new down, tab. keep going down, keep going down, keep going down. You'll see Harlan's picture talking into a porta booth. Click on that, and that will take you right over to voiceoveressentials.com. Thank you, Harlan, for sponsoring us for almost four and a half years. A long so, time. My goodness. Eventually, he's going to catch on. But anyway. <laughs> We're here with Fred Malamed uh, talking about voiceover and his career and what he thinks about voiceover. But you guys have a lot of questions, so why don't we get to the, some of those? And our thanks again to Anthony for monitoring the chat room tonight. Um, first question from Lee, probably Lee Penny. Yeah. Um, good evening, Clarence. Or um, <laughs> Fred. I was wondering if you might share any anecdotes you might have about working with Kurt Russell. Um, um, Kurt Russell is a great guy. I had never met him before, before I have a movie that came out, I guess about maybe about two months ago now. Mm-hmm. Was it two weeks, two months or maybe six weeks? It's called Bone Tomahawk. That's the name of the film. It's a Western film. I don't have a really amusing story to tell about Kurt Russell that I can think of. Uh, but this was an interesting film. It's a, it's a sort of traditional Western with a sort of a horror ending, kind of a Western horror mashup. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and the guy who wrote it uh, is well known in the movie business because he's written, I think, thirty scripts that have all appeared in this famous thing called the blacklist of scripts, which are all the best scripts that don't get produced right, at the end of right, the year. Right, right, right. So uh, this guy, this guy called Craig Zoller, had a number of scripts on the blacklist. So this particular script, uh, Bone Tomahawk, he wanted to direct himself. So it's his first director, it's his directorial debut, uh, and he got quite a good cast for it. Um, uh, he got, in, in addition to Kurt, he got Richard Jenkins. Um, let's see who else. Sid Haig, for people that know horror fans, kind of mm-hmm. genre films. Um, Sean Young, really, really good cast. Uh-huh. Uh, the only thing I can tell you, which is not a particularly amusing thing, is that um, uh, Kurt takes it very, very seriously. He takes the work very, very seriously. And while we were shooting it, we were shooting it a year ago last summer. And like last summer, it was exceedingly hot. It was really, really hot.